Fletcher from the Cornell University College of Veterinary Medicine Emergency Critical Care Department. Um, this is our uh, new medium fidelity canine simulator uh, that we're using for training here at the veterinary school. Um, just to give you a little tour of what's inside of the, of the simulator, um, he's got a a chest segment here that has multiple speakers embedded in it so that we can simulate heart and lung sounds um, on both the left and right sides of the chest. Um, in addition, he's got little actuators in his femoral region that give him pulses that we can palpate. Um, and he's got a balloon here that when we turn on the mannequin will inflate um, along with the breath sounds um, concurrent with those and will allow us to simulate a chest movement. So you can see that inflating so that when we close the simulator up, can see that we can simulate spontaneous breathing, which is one of those ways that we can sort of increase the reality of this for, for the learners who are working on the, the scenarios that we're implementing. So this is the control computer that will control all the physiologic parameters in the mannequin. So there are two ways to, con to uh, program changes into the mannequin. One is to pre-program how you want the different states of the, of the mannequin to, to act. So you can in advance design a series of different physiologic states for the mannequin and then move from state to state during the course of the scenario in advance. Or you can change things on the fly using this control interface. The other thing I can turn on and off from here is the chest rise. So right now it's turned on so that the mannequin's chest is moving with each breath. I can turn that off if I wanted to simulate an arrest um, or if I just wanted to turn it off so the patients could listen a little more closely to the patient. So I can turn that on and off from there. I can also control heart and lung sounds from this, from this screen, so I can click on the drop down here. Right now he has normal lung sounds, I can pick things like crackles, I can pick wheezes, strider, all different types of abnormal sounds um, that I can change for the patient so that the students can listen and pick up abnormalities. So this is, this is showing the video recording that's occurring during the course of the scenario. So you can see um, that we have three different views of the simulation room itself so that we can catch the students with what they're doing and, and from different angles, as well as uh, the patient monitor. So this is showing exactly what's happening physiologically with the patient during the course of the scenario. So this will be recorded in real time during the course of the scenario and will be synced up with the log that's collecting all the different physiologic parameters and any notes that we make. Then after the scenario is over, we can play this video back for the students and we can jump to different segments of the video to highlight specific places where something happened that we, we think would be good for discussion. When we have cases that are critically ill, um, especially in an emergency and in the ICU, these patients have disease processes that can be life-threatening in the short term. And so allowing a student to sort of figure it out is not really an option. And this is also true when, when we're training our house officers, like interns and residents, and for junior associates in veterinary practices. Um, really allowing them to sort of figure it out on their own when a patient is critically ill is probably not an option. So this gives us a way for, um, for, for these learners to actually come in and practice on something that looks like a real animal, acts like a real animal, and gives them some physiologic feedback um, and to allow them to sort of modify their approach. Um, without putting any patients at risk. So this, uh, this is, I think, a really superior way to, to reinforce concepts that they learn in a didactic way.